Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to WSB Stony Brook. You just listened to the album Home from the band The Lost Nights, coming from all the way in Australia. I am joined from. I am joined by one of the members now uh, in the band. So, how about you introduce yourself? Tell us um, what part of the band um, you play, and give us a quick bio, pretty much how the Lost Nights formed, and you know. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, my name's Terry, and yeah, as I, as um, as you said, yeah, uh, uh, lead singer of the Lost Nights. So, yeah, that's that's my that's my role. I don't play much guitar or anything like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> front man. So, when did this band form, and how did you all meet each other? Pretty much. Well, yeah. Well, we we all kind of um, come from different places. So, we all live around Brisbane and the Gold Coast on Australia and um, we basically uh, a large majority of the band three of us came from a band called Goodnight Midnight mm-hmm. and that band went all different ways and we thought well we don't want to stop make, playing music no one wants to ever stop mm-hmm. playing music so we created the Lost Nights and then along the road we found Daniel our drummer whose band also at the time had, um, had was disbanding as well so and then our bassist came along, which is he, our new bassist, actually. Um, he, where he's um, just learning our songs now, so things okay. are going good. So we're a five-piece at the moment. So did so. when you guys all came together, since bo- you guys came from two different bands, as you just mentioned, uh, Good Night, Midnight, and That's right. uh, Here's to Neverland. Because yep. these two bands were really similar, you know, had a female... Um, lead vocalist pretty much and it was just like alternative rock so when you guys met like pretty much met and started writing music together was it like one two three like you kind of were in sync musically ah i see what you mean well yeah we all because like i said three of us came from good night midnight and yeah you're right the female front of band um was good night midnight and okay yeah yeah i suppose it was fairly different to write because Suddenly, we weren't writing for two vocals, a female, male. We were writing mm. for a main vocal, which is myself, and then um, a couple of BVs, ba- uh, sorry, um, yeah, BVs, backup vocals. So we actually use my cousin, who's a guitarist, uh, Jesse, as backup vocals, and as well as my other guitarist, Billy, both from Goodnight Midnight, as backup vocals. So maybe we got, yeah, maybe we got a little bit of something from our old band the way we write and say, well, we didn't really want to give it all to one lead singer. <laughs> I like a break. I like a break now and then. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so it's good. <laughs> so where did the name The Lost Nights come from? Ah, uh, well, we we love. <laughs> this is going to sound <laughs> so geeky because we love Lord of the Rings and the oh, Hobbit okay. and all that sort of stuff. We love medieval things and um, shows, t- movies, all that sort of stuff. So. We wanted something that involved something a little bit medieval, and we wanted it to okay. sound a little bit adventurous and kind of uh, playful in a way. So we actually took a long time um, to name the band. It was at least it was at least at least a month and throwing names around, and it works out well because it's got three syllables, so that's really easy to uh, chant. So when that's true. people are yelling us out on the big stage one day mm. when we hit big time it'll be easy for them to chant <laughs> so, so talk about shows you recently had a big one and it was um you were opening for the band's bayside young line so how did that go as it went really well yeah well um it was good to front uh those bands because we've we've been in talkings with them for a long time and it just it's it's hard enough organizing your own band and five members to be in sync mm. for a show, let alone you'll get to do with another band and it, does it appeal to their schedule and does it appeal to their tour. Mm. Whereas in that, that show we were lucky because we did get to play with uh, Young Lions and Bayside all in one show and our two, two of our favourite bands finally got to play after probably three years of being the Lost mm. Nights and never really getting to play with those bands. So it was a great show. It went really well, big crowd and... Uh, the drummer's hometown, the Gold Coast, so he would have liked that too. Our drummer's from the Gold Coast, and we don't okay. do a lot of shows on the Gold Coast, so yeah, we seem to stick to Brisbane. So to keep on the idea of shows, do you guys have any pre-show rituals that you guys do before? Because um, like, any... I know like some fancy like chants or j- just something. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, we're pretty we're pretty lame when it comes to that. We all do our own weird things. Like, <laughs> if if I have time, I start steaming, so I get a pot of hot water and I hang my head over it like a weirdo and start <laughs> breathing in all the hot air. Um, but that'd be at least half an hour before the show, so that doesn't line up with Jesse's weird uh, noises. It sounds like goose calls he makes. <laughs> I don't know. He's doing something. And Daniel, our drummer, he, he gets out a rubber pad and um, pretty typical thing. It's not too strange. We just start smashing that. So I'd love to have a chant, like something like we'll pull something from the Mighty Ducks or something. <laughs> Mighty Ducks. Great movie. <laughs> so let's do some like general type questions just to kind of like warm you up before we get into kind of death with the you know, LP. Worries. So first question, uh, pick two or three Australian bands – that you can tour with on like a world tour you can pick any two or three okay tonight alive straight off the bat mm. fantastic band they've been around uh since we started our first bands so since forever probably going on six to eight years love tonight alive and love their um um <clears throat> their passion next band definitely uh i could pick more but i'll try <laughs> slim it down um <laughs> The Getaway Plan, we're good mates with The Getaway Plan. They actually played at my wedding. Um, well, just That's a little cool. bit before, before my wedding. Yeah, it was um, a little uh, special thing that my uh, guitarist sorted out with all my family and got them to play acoustic. So I have a special connection with The Getaway Plan. Love to tour with them. And if I picked a third band, who would I pick? Who would I pick? How do I choose? <laughs> I probably would just say Young Lions just because, mm. yeah, they're our our local Brizzy band and um, now that we've done that show with them yeah it just it feels good to share a stage with those guys so right, that's a good answer so another question if you had to do a side project band right mm -hmm. what genre would it be it can't be the same genre that you're doing now but sure. it could be any <laughs> other genre oh that's easy that's surprisingly easy I'll definitely do uh, heavy metal heavy metal <laughs> Like, I definitely, all Unclean's I more metalcore or, like, more, like, just, like, Unclean's, like, the whole song? Uh, I, I don't mind metalcore. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I'd be pretty open. Just, I'd love to do some screaming and um, <laughs> do more of that and pretend I'm some tough, <laughs> I don't know, heavy guy. But, um, I mean, I love the Lost Knights, of course. So it's going to be my passion <laughs> forever. But if, I, if you force me to do... Uh, a side project, yeah. <laughs> it would be some sort of metal band. All right. The last question I got, what were some of your favorite releases from 2016? Oh, 2016. Oh, okay. i got to think it's early here in Australia, so give me a chance. Um, what do we got? What do we got? 2016. The Brave, our friends The Brave, mm -hmm. released a great album fantastic same place we recorded actually stl studios in sydney and love it um i don't know if you heard of those guys but they're yeah they're from brisbane australia as well um who else that's my um that would be my side core inspiration the brave <laughs> my cycle my side band i think i just said side core anyway let's go on <laughs> um <laughs> uh as I, if i can think of something else another release uh I can't remember if Tonight Alive's new album, Limitless, came out just at the end of last year or early this year. Sorry, just at the end or the early last year. But that was a great album too. Really cool. Mm. Um, a different take on that, on their on their Sydney band. And, okay. um, yeah. All right, so let's move on to the LP. Let's first talk about the album art and the title of the album, Home. But with the art, it's pretty much for the listeners that don't know who don't see it it's pretty much two kids on like a heart type boat of that's like a pirate yeah. ship and there's yeah. like a sea monster so why <laughs> did you pick that to represent your album as well as the name home so if you look at um our first ep which we actually released on itunes and google play about three years ago it's got this boy and he's got this roman helmet on and he's um little redhead kid and we thought of him up as a character for our albums, as like a bit of a dreamer. Okay. And um, so we took a lot of um, inspiration from, well, for, I did when thinking of this art sort of style, um, the movie Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, okay. And 
yeah, and then we thought, let's continue this kid's story and his story will run parallel with what we're trying to say in our album, which is the album is called Home and um, these these kids, he's found two new, two new friends. We haven't mm. really story told what, oh, okay. what what their relationship is between each other but yeah they um they're on an adventure and they found a new home that was that was the idea in our head that they found a new home and they've set us out from whatever it was that was behind them and they've they're heading back um to this new island which is their tranquil place (laughs) that's a bit deep but um (laughs) no i would have never thought of that now that you like said it i would never thought it would be that like big story i would have thought of yeah. it as a story okay so do a big bigger story like that but yeah so do you ever I like think of doing like you know like some bands have that like part one part two part well you had the part two and um this lp but kind of like mm. a continu- continuous kind of like a couple of songs like more part ones part twos type stories oh yeah 100 percent. Uh, i think we've uh, if you, if I know what you're talking about, we've actually already done that. We've got a uh, Hope You Change Part One. In uh, we didn't actually call it Part One in the EP, but we didn't really know we were going to make a Part mm. Two. But Hope You Change Part Two is on the album. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're definitely going to continue that story because we've got a lot to write about that. Um, I get that kind of um, lyric base, that storytelling. So, Hope You Change. Part three is actually already on the table. I've been playing around with stuff for whatever it is next, <laughs> another EP or another album, whatever comes next. So. so how does your band write? Is it more jam session or is it type of a piece by piece kind of puzzle where you okay, fit I things suck. together? Yeah, yeah. I, I suck at answering this question because, <laughs> <laughs> because we, we try to flatten this down. We're like, oh, how do we write? Like we've other radio stations but we i'll try to give you the clearest answer because we <laughs> we write all over the place like one of our main ways of writing is the guitarists would go away and they'll write something mm. and they'll send it they'll upload it to soundcloud and i'll have a listen and i'll have a sing along in the car and go yeah that's cool not really focus on the lyrics so focus more on the melody and what what i want my voice to do with that guitar piece and then at the same time, our drummer's already listening to the same tune. That's one way of writing. Okay. And then we kind of get together and all jam it out and go, hey, you all got, you all So it's kind to of a it. combination let's, let's of both. Yeah. And then there'll be those nights, the second way of writing, which is also probably, it's probably just as popular as that one for the band, which is we literally just get together acoustically, whoever's available, and we just go, let's write about love. I don't know. <laughs> and then we just go for it at my house and we probably go for about, five hours just writing and we have a lot of we go through a lot of um beers and coke and chips and all that Mm. sort of stuff so we're sitting there just writing so that's two ways we probably write so was this more of a home produced album or did you actually go into like the studio and record? oh definitely definitely from beginning um we do those writing processes that i explained beforehand and then we actually do something that's called pre-production so Mm. however we can whether it's rent a studio cheaply for a day in brisbane um record our songs and just roughly so that we can get a feel of what they would be close to finish then we make our big crazy wild trip to sydney which is about 10 hours to gosford (laughs) and we record with a guy um his name's sunny true love awesome name i know and um he's at stl studios and we show him our product um obviously unfinished and he has a listen and he points out some bits that you know he loves and then some bits he he just doesn't love and Mm. we get to it so we we have kind of um a good basis to start with and yeah he he's um he's fun to work with and that's that's a professional recording there at, at sydney that's the um that's that's he'll be the guy we're probably going to keep going to for a long time so (laughs) this this question might be a little difficult for you being the vocalist but uh throughout the lp you guys did a lot of different transition type pieces or just parts of the Uh, song where it goes like soft to like energetic again and vice versa was that difficult for you guys to write 
for this album? Um, it was. I could try answer that. Um, I think part of it is my fault <laughs> <laughs> or my doing. Um, I guess we we would we'd we we wrote the EP uh, with the three truck. When I say EP, we wrote uh, an EP um, with that album, uh, the, the boy I was talking about mm. with a little Roman helmet on his head. We did that about three years ago to get ourselves started. While we looked for our drummer and bass guitarist. And then it had been three years in between that little EP and this new album called Home. So we had so much time and I guess we just got adventurous and um, we got our drummer. We had never had a drummer in the Lost Nights before. So suddenly all these fast-paced bits and slow-paced bits and more energetic bits kind of came naturally when those writing sessions, Mm -hmm. sitting down with a drummer, smashing on the couch and the table and things like that, you can hear that we could be a lot more uh, versatile with the music, and that happens. That that'll happen once our bass guitarist gets settled in as well. I'm sure the next thing we write, whether it's an EP or an album, will be different again. Uh, so, next question I got for you is for pretty much your guys' sound for this whole LP. I thought it kind of had a unique sound you know if i listen to it, it's like oh yeah that's the lost nice type of you know feeling so yep. were, were there any points while making the lp when you said uh i like, said to yourself it's like oh this part sounds too much like this band or like this part sounds like that band trying well, to give yourself it... that uniqueness yeah sure sure i totally understand um with the that's interesting like because we feel that nobody we love to hear what bands think and uh, sorry what fans think and bands think both um other bands and they we haven't really come up come to a lot of people maybe we just don't have a lot of fans no i'm kidding but um <laughs> a lot of people have actually said you know i can't place you or um you definitely sound like this band or you definitely like sound like this a lot a lot of bands i'm oh, sorry a lot of fans actually just can't really place us they they say we're something a bit different, something a bit new. So, um, yeah, that's even, even if we get inspired by other bands and say, Oh, we want to write a bit more like Pierce the Vowel. We Mm -hmm. love their, um, their, uh, solos and things like that. We, we can, we can head down that road, but it'll always turn out like something unique. I don't know what it is because I mean, you've got five brains thinking about Mm -hmm. something else and inspired by something else. But, Whenever we say, "Oh, I love this new, you know, a day to remember song," it's um, it'd be fun to write a song and be able to have a song similar to that on stage, okay. so we can jump around like crazy guys like that. But it'll always sound different. Like as as um, as the more we write, we the more we discover that, yeah, the Lost Nights definitely have their sound. Okay. So, was there any song on this album that you guys had totally writer's block and just like couldn't? get like that certain part finished um yeah 100 percent um we had a song our last song we wanted for the album we took down to the studio and we ended up didn't even we sorry we ended up not finishing it because we just couldn't we had to write a new song which we ended up writing with the uh producer there so he had um some guitar parts and things like that already written down and that one was drama but we had a song that was completely different to that, that we took mm. down to the studio and we just basically got stumped. It didn't sound like it was going to fit beautifully on the album. So we all sat down and made a decision to go with something that uh, Sonny from STL Studios had put um, more more work behind and his um, engineer, Evan. So we went with that and that was, that was was that's our best example. That's our solid example okay. of writer's block. We, we had our songs to finish the album and then that last one that would have created the icing on the cake we just couldn't have um we just couldn't pull it together for that one so 100 percent, we get writer's block <laughs> uh so i got about two more questions uh sure. the first one is going to be pretty much could you give us a background story to one of the songs on the lp one or two of the songs well Okay, so let's. I think you just played "Smile" on the radio. Yeah, um, that was the last one. Yeah, that was um, that, that was a piano piece, and the band really wanted to write um, a song about 
a lot of people had passed away that we'd known in the last in the last three years 2014 mm. 15 16 that we know and who were close to us and we felt like we really wanted to um, write a song in a way that because we always feel like they're you know watching us day by day mm. and it's nice to nice to think that if you know if we just think of them now and then and put a smile on our face and and just enjoy the fact that um, you know they're they're still around. I like to think they're still around, mm. and that song's all about telling a story about uh, thinking of thinking of them and not being not feeling like you are alone. That they are still around, and it's it's a strange song because it's I sang yeah, it's it kind of like out of with place. the guys like I, yeah, I, like, on it, the out, like it's kind of like different from the rest. Like, yeah, really. and we sung it from the perspective, from um, as if it's the person who has actually uh, uh, moved on. So we really wanted to write that one, and yeah, we did. We did look at it and go, "This is going to be a lot different to the rest of the album." But still, we thought, "Let's tag it on to the very end, just for something." It's an extra long one too. It's I think it's four minutes mm. and ten seconds, and we thought, "Let's let's." nab it in on the end of this album because I kind of like that too with other bands as well how you've got this crazy energetic album and then mm. right at the end you get something a little bit more um, quiet um, yeah like lots, lots of bands like usually them. not like at the end but they like to do it like right in the middle sometimes they'll have yeah. that like soft interlude, interlude type piece that like just like smile pretty much I'll have just that. to break it up a bit yeah yeah. So sure. the last question I got for you is what do you want to experiment musically on upcoming music that you make? I get I know the answer to that question. I uh the there's two things that we want to do for um the future of the Lost Nights. Um we want to add um a huge stage performance. So the band's been talking about it and we want to have we have fun on stage, but we want to have maximum fun. Mm. So <laughs> you have to make, and because that's like the most important aspect is the live performance. That's it. that's it. We're having a great time right now on the stage, and and but we thought for next album, let's let's um let's let's write music that the crowd is um really really involved. So I'm I'm, I'm assuming you're going to sound you're going to hear a lot of. Mm crowd vocals and big epic drums in whatever we write next so the band seems to be aligning with that sort of thought and less less maybe um vocals individually like we sing a lot in our songs and we were back on the crowd vocals we'd really love the audience to be able to sing along because our fan base is growing and we really just want to be um we want to have a set of songs as well that the crowd goes nuts with and gets to enjoy and jump around and you know let their hair down so uh but, so hold on sorry my phone turned off you're right <laughs> uh so i forgot to ask this question earlier uh so it's been a pretty much not almost a year almost a year it came out in may the album last year so you've been touring with this lp for a while now is there any cool tour stories that you like to share before we end, um, we've only we've been quite close to home when it comes to touring around, and we're trying to organise one around Australia at the moment. Tour stories, I don't, yeah, I don't really have any good tour stories. I have, um, <laughs> I have boring stories all the way to Sydney to record our album. <laughs> but uh, right, that's fair enough. Think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so. Where can people find your music and keep up to date with you guys for in for the future? Sure. Well, we're very active on our Facebook and Instagram. Um, we have a Twitter as well, which we'd like to get really into in 2017. So you can follow us there too. <laughs> um, all our music is on Apple Music, Apple iTunes, Google Play, uh, JB Hi-Fi um, online. All the online stores, there's about 35 of them. So if you're just... Um, if you're on Spotify or or SoundCloud or anything like that and you just like to stream stuff, yeah, we're there too. 
All right. So cool. I want to thank you for being my first Australian band guest. <laughs> yeah. <on there>. First. <laughs> So That's awesome. can't wait to hear future music. Uh, have a great day. Um, definitely keep up to date with us and us singles. I'll be I'll definitely play it up on here. You know. <laughs>